Mankind has been brewing for a long, long time. Ever since our ancestors settled into towns and cities, you can bet there were a few women brewing up some good beer to keep everyone together in harmony. But beer back then looked very different than it does today. It was not nearly as bubbly, it was cloudy, and it was very nutritious and a lot less alcoholic. Even drinking beer was different. It was a communal activity that involved drinking the beer out of a large bowl through long reed straws. Hey everyone, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and today we're going to look at the modern brewers who are trying to revive these ancient beers so us modern beer nerds can get in touch with our beer guzzling roots. Today's topic was suggested by Irish Groundhog Brewer. He has a great homebrew and beer review channel, and he left a comment on one of my videos asking me to take a dive into the world of ancient beer. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll examine a couple of cases of modern brewers trying to revive ancient beer styles. Let's get started. First, we're going to ancient Egypt, an area that had a really rich brewing tradition. Based on current scholarly research, the ancient Egyptians appear to have distinguished between different beers by their alcoholic strength, color, and dominant flavor. We would probably call these beer categories styles nowadays. The most favored beer styles in ancient Egypt apparently were blood red in color, which makes Egyptian drinkers seem pretty hardcore if you ask me. The Egyptian brews would start in their bakery, where they would bake loaves of bread using a coarse ground flour. The baking of the bread to start the brewing process is somewhat equivalent to the modern malting process. They would stick those loaves into crocks of water with flavoring agents and wait for the magic of wild yeast to come and work their magic on the brew. One of the best attempts to recapture the ancient Egyptian brewing tradition was done by historians at Dartmouth along with the help of Portsmouth Brewing. They began with a pretty simple and bready grain bill using heirloom wheat varieties like emmer and spelt along with a bit of barley. Then they added some chocolate roasted heirloom barley to give it a little bit more flavor and color. They ended up with a very enzyme rich malt that had an SRM color of about 12. Moving on to the boil, they added some adjuncts for flavor that would have been consistent with brewing techniques at the time. This included about 4 pounds of mashed dates, 3.7 pounds of honey for added sugar and alcohol content, 2 pounds of ginger root, and 12 ounces of mandrake root, both of those for flavor. After the boil, the beer was treated like any other. It was whirlpooled, heat exchanged, and then pitched uh, with a Chico type ale yeast. The Faro Ale tasted unlike a lot of our modern brews, in part because our modern palates have become so accustomed to the presence of hops. The brew has a minimal but fresh and appetizing bouquet. Visually, the color is a deep reddish amber to almost light mahogany and had an upfront nutty taste that faded nicely into a great malt profile. The overall impression of the brew leaves behind that it is a very clean tasting, refreshing, dry, medium bodied, drinkable beer. The crazy thing to me about these tasting notes is that this ancient brew accomplishes all of those great flavors with a rather limited set of ingredients and brewing technology. Really cool to see that beer back then was mighty tasty. Now, these brewing techniques and flavoring agents were pretty common throughout the ancient Middle East, but as civilization expanded, new techniques were used as beer brewing spread throughout the world. Archaeobotanists and researchers at Stuttgart, Germany have been trying to revive ancient Celtic beer styles that were popular in the area some 2,000 years ago. Early Celtic rulers of a community in Germany liked to party. They would stage elaborate feasts in a ceremonial center. The business side of those ragers was located in the nearby brewery capable of turning out large quantities of beer with a dark, smoky, and slightly sour taste. Six specially constructed ditches previously excavated at Erbendingen Hochdorf, a 2,500-year-old Celtic settlement, were used to make high-quality barley malt, says archaeobotanist Hans-Peter Stitka of the University of Hohenheim. Thousands of charred barley grains unearthed in the ditches about a decade ago came from a large malt-making enterprise. Sticka bases the conclusion on a close resemblance of the ancient grains to modern malt produced in modern facilities. 
Upon confirming presence of malt at the Celtic site, Stitka reconstructed malt making techniques there to determine how they must have affected beer taste. At the Celtic site, the barley was soaked in the specially constructed ditches until it sprouted. The grains were then dried by lighting fires at ends of the ditches, giving the malt a smoky taste and a darkened color. Lactic acid bacteria stimulated by the slow drying of the soaked grains added sourness to the brew. Unlike modern beers that are flavored with flowers of the hop plant, the Hotchdorf brew contains spices such as mugwort, carrot seeds, or herbane. Beer makers are known to have used these additives by medieval times, but excavations at the Celtic site have yielded a few seeds of herbane, a plant that also makes beer more intoxicating. Beer nerds today would regard Celtic beer as a pretty strange brew, not only for its flavor, but because it would have been cloudy, contained yeasty sediment, and would have been imbibed at room temperature. Though it would have had a similar alcohol content to today's beers. The flavors of these beers would have been a combination of current styles. They had plenty of smoky malt flavors, but would have also had a hint of the lactic acid that are common in many of today's lighter sours. The herbal notes would have also been quite different as there's no hot bitterness to balance out the malt and herb flavors. So there you go beer nerds, a couple of brews that may seem strange by today's standards, but were certainly the best of their time. Which of these beers would you rather try, Egyptian or Celtic? Let me know in the comments section below. A big thanks to Irish Groundhog Brewer for suggesting today's topic. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below, please go check it out. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you next time with some more great beer video content.